What is this? I'm back? I know, I know. Unexpected, unexpected. Uh, yeah. So, like I said first episode, I most likely will be kind of sporadic with these. And as you can see, that proved to be true. I fully intended on making another episode last week. But guess what? Depression didn't end up doing it. Um, I really struggle with motivation to do even the simplest of things. So even something like this was hard for me, even though it's a very easy video process to do. It still, it can be hard for me sometimes to, you know, get up and do it. I can think about it, but it's hard for me to actually do it. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it just sounds like I'm lazy. Hopefully not, though. But anyway, how are you? How has your week and a half been? Yeah? I can't hear you, but, you know, you could put it in the comments if anyone watches this. That's, you could do that. I will read them. Anyway, my week, I, it's been a little weird. It's been a little weird. Um, last week, you know, I don't know if you guys have been on Twitter. Oh my god. <laughs> Twitter is like exploding right now. All these content creators that, well not all of them I looked up to, but there was one in particular I somewhat looked up to. And turns out not as good as a person as I thought he would be. I, quite the opposite actually. Seems like he was pretty much a terrible person and just had the whole internet fooled, which you know, I, I imagine that's pretty common. But it was just sad and disappointing to find out that someone I really looked up to, once again, was one of those people. And this is something that I think a lot of us have kind of gotten used to at this point, which is very upsetting. Like, is it really that hard to be a good person? I don't think it is. But vegan, I don't always know if I'm a good person. So, you know, maybe it is. Maybe it is, but there are certain things that where, you know, you mess up and it's like, dude, there was no excuse. You should not have been acting like that. That's, you're actually just awful. <laughs> you need help. Um, but hopefully he gets that. Hopefully um, the victims involved are okay. I don't want to mention names and stuff just because I don't want to dwell on it. And yeah, just... He doesn't need any more attention than what he's getting. Um, anyway, so all of that was quite a shock. And it came out some more about some other content creators. Apparently also did some stuff. But I never really was a big fan of any of them. So I haven't kept up with that. Um, but it, it, it's pretty disheartening to see. What the freak was that? I hate college camp. I hate living on college campus. Get me out of here. I don't even live here, actually. I'm just here from, you know, 8 to midnight every day. 8 a.m. to midnight. But I don't live here. So, if you hear cars honking and students yelling, ignore that. I'm just outside recording this because it's too loud inside. And I don't feel like, you know, waiting till midnight to record this. Because I know if I don't record it now, while it's on my mind, it's never going to get done. So... And I want to keep doing this because it's something I told myself I want to do. So let's talk about motivation <laughs> and my lack thereof. I don't, what causes that? Like, I know I have depression. I know I have anxiety. I know I have trauma. But what makes it so hard for me to get out of bed and just brush my teeth? or brush my hair to do the most simple task that seems like everyone else is able to do with ease and just like second nature. For me, I have to lay in bed for 30 minutes to an hour just telling myself, all right, come on, you gotta get up. You gotta do this. You have to face the day. And maybe that's why it's so hard because I know like once I do these tasks, that means I'm getting on with my day. I have to actually go live. And I don't always necessarily wanna do that. Because life kind of sucks a lot of time. I'm not even going to say sometimes. It just, a lot of times, it sucks. 
and I think lately it's just been hard to see a lot of the light and joy in life right now just because of things going on in personal life things going on online you go online to escape and oh my gosh no everyone you looked up to is actually either a pedophile or an abuser so you know there's that it's just like man we you really can't have anything these days can you you can't look up to anyone because they're always going to let you down and then you know you're, you're supposed to motivate yourself and just be like well i'll be a good person but what even is a good person i don't know how to be a good person I often, like, I had a mental breakdown last week, so I was like, I'm not a good person, because I made someone upset with a joke I made, and broke down crying, had a panic attack, almost relapsed, it was awful, and I just went to bed that night thinking, am I a good person? What is a good person? I don't donate to charity as much as I should. I'm a broke college student. I don't have money to donate. The money that I do get... I barely scrape by and buy groceries. So, if being a good person is participating in charity, I'm not able to do that. Is being a good person always being super sweet and kind? Because I used to be like that and I got walked on. Walked over, constantly. I got used. I, have yeah, you know, not a fun time in my life at all. So it feels like, no, you can't be sweet and trusting and nice because people just use you. So what is a good person? Am I a good person? These people that I look up to that I thought were amazing and just had me starstruck since I was 16, they weren't good people. And that sucks because like, who am I supposed to be then? And that's something that I've always struggled with. Who am I? What am I doing? And, you know, I was in therapy before and someone said, oh, you know, just take it day by day of just trying to be a good person. Well, what's a good person? Because sometimes I get irritable. I get tired. I get snappy. I don't want people touching me. I don't like people talking to me when I'm like that. I just don't always seem the nicest. I have a resting, what's it called? RBF, you know? I, I don't have the most pleasing face to look at resting wise. Sometimes it looks like I'm quite mad when I'm not. Uh, you know, I don't always take care of myself, so I don't always look nice. So is being a good person someone who loves themselves and takes care of themselves and loves and takes care of others because that's not always me i'm not in a place where i can do that right now i think i used to be and i try to be now when i can but most of the time i'm just kind of focused on surviving every day which sounds so dramatic but it's true i have to just get through the day without cutting myself or without wanting to die and you know I don't think a lot of people realize how taxing that is and then like I've told my employer yeah I've slept in every single day this week not proud of it at all but I also have I'm numb I don't want to say I have no empathy I don't think that's the right word but I'm numb to it at this point. And I feel bad, I think. But it's kind of closed off. So is being a good person being able to have empathy? To love others? Because right now, I don't know if I'm capable of that. This is really sad and depressing. Lord, let's talk about something else. What else we got to talk about? You guys see the new Dead by Daylight killer? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure it was inspired by Manda Mandela Catalog, which guess what? Apparently that guy, the guy made that, is also in trouble. 
or got caught doing some things. I didn't really fully look into the situation. I saw the headline on Twitter and logged off. <laughs> it's like, I cannot take this. Oh my gosh. How hard is it to just not touch or talk to a child romantically or sexually? I, I don't get that. Lord. Again, I didn't look into the situation, but there are people saying oh, like, he was like a pedophile or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I didn't look into it because I'm like, I've had enough negativity. <laughs> I cannot do this right now. And it's so weird because then, like, I get so upset about these things that are happening online. I'm like, gosh, wow, you know, online, all these things are happening right now. It's just so depressing. And I talk to my friends and they're like, oh, we just don't even use Twitter. I'm like, oh, you're not. Oh. And they're like, yeah, I mean, who's, who are these YouTubers you're talking about? I've never even heard of them. Like, oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I forget sometimes. Um, not everyone has experienced the same things I did and looked up to the people that I did and was raised by the internet, like me. So, you know, they're kind of just out living normal lives and focusing on school. And I'm over here just like, no, my Minecraft YouTuber, what happened? And Matt, oh my lord, we gotta talk about Matt Pat. Him and several other YouTubers all retiring right now. That's, oh, it hasn't hit me yet. It really hasn't. Um, but I just watched his final theory the other night. Uh, very well made. I love the multiple endings. I think that was so cute. Or not cute. It was cool. It was cool. All right. Um. Especially because he's done so much with ARGs before. I think it was just a nice little send-off. Um, and I'm excited for whatever the theorist channels have in store. I'm excited for them. And I hope that they're going to do well. Uh, it seems like all the people that are kind of going to become the host of those shows, it seems like they're all pretty cool people. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, he did mention, though, he was like, you know, I totally understand. You've put trust into me. And now I'm leaving. You have to build up trust with these people. I have never really thought of it that way. But he is so right. It's so weird. You never meet these content creators most of the time. Like, I have watched YouTube. I've watched PewDiePie, for example, since I was maybe 13. And I know I never have never met him. I probably never will meet him. And yet... I really respect that guy. I really look up to him. And I'm so glad he's still posting those vlogs because I don't know what I'd do without those right now because those are like the best part of my week is when I can go back and look at some of his little family vlogs. And when I see Bjorn smile, his little son, I'm just like, oh, I'm just so proud of this guy. And I've watched him and Marcia grow and I'm just so, so incredibly proud of him. And for Matt Pat, I'm just so so proud of him and i remember when ollie was born and like the hype while stephanie was pregnant uh, it was just so sweet and it's amazing how invested in these people we get and then something comes out and they let you down or they leave and it's not like real life where, like, let's say some, your coworker retires, you can still go visit them. I don't know this person. This content creator that I've learned to rely on isn't real. It's a persona. That's how I've kind of started to view it. It's just very strange to me. And seeing Matt Pat leave now, it's like, oh, it was a wake-up call a little bit. But I am so incredibly proud. I, some people were kind of upset. And I was like, dude, this guy has a family. I get it. That's what I'd want to do. If I had a baby, I would not be cranking out YouTube videos every day of the week. <laughs> like, I'd, I'd want to spend all that time with my son or my daughter. And, you know, just live that part of my life. And I think it's wonderful that he's doing that. I did hear he was going to keep doing GT Live, though, which I am so excited for because... GT Live is like the best part of my week. I love it. I've been watching it consistently 
since it was first created. I remember when they made and announced GT Live. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to be there. And I was. I was there for most of the early, early streams. I was in that chat. And... Oh, like him and Stephanie. I remember seeing Stephanie for the first time and just being like, Oh, who is the oh there is that he's married? What? <laughs> like it was so cute and they're such a darling little couple and I think they're such a good they're such good role models, really. Like, yeah, everyone screws up. And I'm sure Matt Pat has had some screw ups over his career. Off the top of my head, I don't really remember anything crazy. But for sure, like Every content creator is going to screw up at some point. They're going to let us down because they're human, just like us. But seeing him grow on his channel, seeing his and Stephanie's relationship, just how wholesome they can be. And even the fact that he's stepping down and retiring to take care of his son and spend that time with his family. I really admire that and I really look up to that. And I think that was one of the most mature things you could do. Because you only get one life. And how you use it is very important. That's something I'm really starting to learn also. A lot of my life has been spent on the internet. I was born in 2003. You know, um, we grew up with one of those giant computers that looks like a box TV. And it, you turn it on and it takes like an hour to boot up and... You can play some games on it, but it was, you know, super slow, heavy, not portable at all. Grew up with one of those. I remember, like, the first game I ever played was, like, Club Penguin. And we had a Muppets Racing on, like, a PlayStation. The first PlayStation. Maybe PlayStation 2. I don't remember. Anyway. A lot of my life has been spent in front of a screen. It's been either playing video games or watching someone play video games, watching makeup videos. When I was in high school, I got obsessed with makeup videos. And let's not go down that rabbit trail that is the beauty community. Lord, I spent like two years in that and I was, that was enough for me. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's crazy that, and like now even, a part of my job is to be on Twitter, because I've mentioned before, I'm a manager for a collegiate esports team. So I'm making scorecards and graphics for my school, and I'm checking up with my guys, and they're playing Valorant all day, and I go in there and hang out with them, and I've started playing Valorant with them. But I'm in front of a screen. And right now, I'm recording this on my phone, a screen. Right before this, I was playing Dead by Daylight, <laughs> the new killer, because I was super excited about that. And sometimes I really do have to take a step back and just say like, okay, I don't feel real right now. I don't feel human sometimes when I get so sucked in to technology and you know, I spend countless hours scrolling through TikTok and Twitter and Instagram even. And I just get sucked in and like that's the culture that I'm in. So I'll talk to people about like, hey, did you see this happened on t Twitter and th with this streamer, this happened? And they're just like, no, I was spending time with my family. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wish I could relate. Oh, cool. Um... It's sad. It's kind of sad. But also, I think you could make the argument, I wouldn't trade most of the memories I've made on the internet, I would never trade them. I mentioned in my last video how after school I would run home and get to play Minecraft on the weekends and stuff when we first got Minecraft on the computer. And how ecstatic I was for that. And... I mean, those were some of my happiest memories. And I played by myself on public servers. I didn't have Discord or anything like that yet. And yet, it was still the time of my life. And then, you know, I played, I mentioned earlier, I, before Minecraft, I played a lot of Club Penguin. 
I had so much fun on there. I... It was, it was just amazing. And I made so many friends. My brother was in a homeschool program, and I made a friend through that. And she and I were long-distance friends. We played club hanging with each other all the time after school. And it was so much fun. And on the internet, you know, there are communities that kind of form. And for me, I am a really, you know, here's a little interesting fact about me. I'm a huge fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I am almost nearly obsessed with it. As a kid, I was obsessed with Star Wars, but then as Disney took over, I realized I don't really like this anymore, and I switched to Ninja Turtles. And I've been riding that wave. And so it's so nice to be able to go online and find a community that are like, yeah, we also love this sh these shows and these movies and these comics. Let's talk about it. Let's, you know, there's people you can relate to. Because I feel like so often in real life, I don't have people to relate to and maybe that's why I did spend most of my time online it's because I didn't have friends that really liked me or cared about me I never felt like I related to any of them going back to you know I didn't feel human I felt like everyone else was given instructions on how to be a human being and I was the only one left behind and I just had no clue what I was doing so I resorted to going online and I formed my personality off YouTubers I watched, so, you know, when the Filthy Frank era of YouTube was going on, I was not a good person, but, <laughs> you know, my friends and I all kind of emulated those personalities that we watched, which like, it was not a good idea, but, you know, that's what we did, and I, you know, YouTube cult, like, oh, was I? I was talking to my mom the other day, she was like, oh, what year did this happen, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't keep track of the years by like what age I was. I literally think, okay, so in 2016, YouTube was like this and this was going on YouTube. So I think this must have been the time period. Like I literally categorized the years based off what memes and stuff were popular on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Like what is wrong with me? Legitimately, what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh my gosh, and YouTube rewind, dude. Oh. That's another way of how I categorize the years. Where I was like, oh yeah, well, you know, in... Uh, I'm going to have to think off the top of my head. It's been a while. 2013 or 14, PewDiePie was in a YouTube Rewind for the first time. And it was such a big deal because it was like the first time, you know, he was featured in it. They had to beg for him to be on there and he was someone I really looked up to. And that was such a huge deal in my childhood. But I talked to other people and they're like, what's YouTube Rewind? And for me, that was something I looked forward to every year. I was so pumped about it. And then even when they started going bad, I was still like, well, I'm excited to see what people create. And like PewDiePie's YouTube Rewind that he made, phenomenal. I loved it. What was it? Was it in 2018, I believe? He made that? Phenomenal. Mr. Beast made his own. A lot of people made their own during like 2020 and stuff. And 2020, oh my lord, the internet culture during 2020. I think a lot of people became more active online during that time just because of quarantine and stuff. And that was where, you know, I kind of, I, I was kind of, I guess, not as involved on the internet around that time. At that point, I had started making some friends. I was trying to kind of get away from being the weird kid all the time. But as soon as COVID hit, I just kind of retreated back into my shell, re-downloaded Discord, and ended up doing all the classic quarantine things of, you know, sleeping on call with, people, with my friends and with my online friends and having online friends in general. <laughs> um, I played, I don't think, I don't, at some point during quarantine, I don't think it was 2020, but my brother got like an Oculus Quest, so I played VR chat for the fr first time. That god forsaken land lord um still a fun game i i joke about how depraved it is. depraved deprived whatever i joke about how awful it is on vr chat but i really have made a lot of friends on there and i absolutely love it sometimes where is that going with all this 
but yeah my life has been so central to the internet and a lot of my personality is based off all these people i grew up watching so then at the end of the day i just i don't feel human i feel like another piece of the algorithm and like i'm not my own person but is anyone really their own person because even if i formed my personality maybe off these online people i think normal people base their personalities off people they're around your family members your friends it, we mimic each other naturally it's a survival instinct of ours and it's just kind of been passed down it's how we learn to fit in but i was never quite good at that but finding content creators i really liked online and mimicking them i did slowly become what i thought was my own person was it heavily based off all of them yeah is it still somewhat based on them yes yes i cannot tell you how many times on stream i make Little Markiplier references that no one's going to understand because it was just a throwaway line he said back in 2014, but it's still in my head because it, I thought it was funny and I'm never going to forget it. And isn't that just so special? Maybe it's weird. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I am just a, an, a weird internet child thing. But I'm learning to be okay with it. And I'm learning that it's okay I didn't have the typical childhood experience. I wasn't meant to have that. Because I'm not your typical person. That sounds kind of like a pick me. Ignore that. What I mean to say is, you know, I have... My brain works differently than other people. I don't like to admit that, but it does. So... You know, I might as well just embrace the fact that, yeah, I'm weird. My life was founded on the internet, which some people might view as sad. I think sometimes, you know, it's actually quite cool. And again, like, who else in my friend group can just pick up a line from one of Markiplier's videos back in 2014, 2015 and, like, get it, you know? I I'll make references to YouTube obscure YouTube videos. And they're just like, what are you on about? And I think it's the funniest thing in the world. And it makes me unique in a way. I'd like to think. Because my other friends, you know, they all just see me like, oh, you're just, she's making one of her weird references again. There she goes. I think that's hilarious. I don't really know where I was going with all this. That's why it's called Ricky Rambles, bro. I didn't write anything down. I'm literally sitting outside on like a staircase filming this. Cars are like driving past. I'm just kind of hoping they're not looking at me. I'm slumped over trying to record this. <laughs> Drinking my new- Bro, they made a new monster flavor. Do you see this? It's called um, Ultra Fantasy Ruby Red. It's r like a reddish pink and blue on the can. And I think the actual like liquid is pink. It is so cool. It tastes a little bit like fruit punch. I'm just going to throw it out there. I like it. I don't know what other people think about it yet, but I actually kind of like it. I probably like it better than the pink one. I said it. <laughs> That's right. I have an opinion. Well, I'm not going to go to Twitter with this one, gang. That is something I need to learn to stop doing, though, is to stop worrying about what other people's opinions are. Because that is something, you know, like if my, content, my favorite content creator thinks this, then I would just be like, oh, yep, that's what I think, too. That is a trap I fall under. And now, growing up and seeing, well, a lot of the content creators you looked up to weren't great people. You probably shouldn't have agreed with them on everything. It's kind of opened my eyes where it's like, you know what? Yeah, no, I need to make my own opinions. I'm an adult. And it's time that I make my own decisions. I make my own way in life. Maybe get off Twitter and get off YouTube so much and just live and just be. I don't really know if I have anything else to say, to be honest. <laughs> I, I don't know 
if any of this was cohesive. I am so sleep deprived. <laughs> um, yeah, I really got, I don't, it's, this reminds me of quarantine, how awful my sleep schedule is right now. I went to bed last night at 4.30, got up at uh, 9.30, went and did an interview. Uh, I did some filming for my college. And then I went back and I fell asleep, slept through my class, slept through work. I woke up feeling awful because I hadn't eaten all day. So my blood sugar just tanked and I felt so nauseous. And then I finally went and made like some mashed potatoes <laughs> and got a monster. <laughs> Don't be like me. I know I said that last episode too. Don't be like me. Do as I say, not as I do. Alright? It's classic. That's going to be a classic phrase on here from now on. So, I'm probably going to go maybe walk to a gas station, get something to eat. Uh, something a little bit. They have great sandwiches down the road. Oh my gosh, bro. They have these Italian club things. I know it's not real Italian. It's American Italian, but still. Whew. Oh, it's good. I'll probably run down and grab one of those. And I hope some of this, any of this, was cohesive or coherent. That's the right word. I hope this was coherent enough you could follow along. It most likely wasn't, and that's okay. Because that's just how it is. That's how my brain works. And this is just your little window into... The wackiness that is my mind. Welcome. And I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what? I hope to see you next week. Like I said, though, motivation. That's a, that's a kicker. Um, I'm hoping maybe as the semester, once the semester is over, I can maybe get back on my feet a little bit. I think I'm just burnt out. That might be just what it is. We don't have any breaks this semester since we're doing a short semester. So I probably am just burnt out. I recognize that. I'm at least that self-aware. And I know I need to get my sleep schedule on top of... The, yeah, I need to do better. <laughs> so hopefully I will. Hopefully next time I make a video, I can talk about how proud I am of myself for actually sleeping for once. But until then, this has been Ricky Rambles. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all next week. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Don't hold me to that. Remember that you are loved, take care of yourself, and I will see you later. Bye!